On January 2nd, 1890, Edward Avery McElhenney was out mallard hunting in Vermilion Bay, Louisiana. While retrieving some mallards he shot, he saw in front of him what he thought was a large log. Upon further inspection, he discovered it was an American alligator of enormous size, and it laid motionless in the cold water. He thought the alligator was unable to get back into his winter den and would have died from being exposed to the cold. McElhenney shot the alligator in the head, and when he lifted the head of the beast out of the water, he was convinced that this was the largest alligator he'd ever seen. He also thought the alligator was old and noted its teeth were worn down almost to the jawbone. The next morning, McElhenney and his hunting companions tied some rope around the dead alligator's neck and tried to pull the alligator out of the water. However, the alligator's great weight prevented the men from dragging the alligator far. They quit their efforts, and McElhenney proceeded to take the barrel of his gun off and measure the alligator with it. The barrel was 30 inches long, and McElhenney marked each measurement with a knife on the alligator's back. McElhenney measured the alligator three times, and they each gave the same measurement. This alligator was 19 feet 2 inches long, making it the largest alligator ever measured. Or is it? The first thing we have to acknowledge is that there is no physical or photographic evidence of this alligator. It seems strange that no attempt was made to remove the head of the animal. All we have to look back on is the word of McElhenney. Which brings us to the next question. Can we trust his word? The answer is, maybe. While Edward Avery McElhenney may be known for his family's hot sauce company, he was surprisingly well known as an educated naturalist, especially on American alligators. He actually wrote a well-respected book titled The Alligator's Life History in 1935 and showed he was very observant when it came to American alligators. Kelby Uchley, in his book American Alligator, Ancient Predator in the Modern World, stated McElhenney was, quote, likely the most knowledgeable alligator expert in the country at one time. However, McElhenney could have been lying or exaggerating about this alligator. You see, McElhenney wasn't always truthful. One prime example being he claimed he was the reason for Nutria to be introduced to Louisiana. The McElhenney Company historian has even stated, quote, he was well known on the island for his gift for spinning yarns. I think he saw himself as an entertainer when relating his personal history. He took liberties in a good-natured way. When taking this all into account, it's hard to really determine if this really is the largest alligator ever recorded you can decide whether this monster gator existed or not. To learn more about the animals you just saw, buy my book, What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians. It examines claims of giant crocodiles, a World War II massacre, their regenerating tails, alligators and sewers, their record land speeds, and more. The book looks at a variety of subjects many people, including experts, get wrong about these animals, and I desperately wanted to dispel the myths that have persisted so long. Buy What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians in physical or digital formats. Link in bio, comments, or description to buy.